Hi everyone, myself Navya Tavi, working as assistant professor in the department of cyber security and data science in MLR Institute of Technology. Today, I am going to discuss about complex integrity constraints in SQL. The overview of presentation includes constraints applied on a single table with check option, defining domain constraints and defining constraints over several tables that is nothing but assertions. So, before going to discuss these three, we need to know about what is a constraint. Here the constraints in the context of DBMS, constraints are nothing but are the set of rules. Set of rules, why? What is the purpose of maintaining some rules and regulations? To maintain the database in a consistent manner. Right. So, here to maintain the database in a consistent manner, we use some set of rules. Those are nothing but the constraints. So, here we have, we used to define three types of constraints. The rules can be applied on a single table. The rules can be applied on a group of tables, which are called as assertions. And we used to define domain constraint, the rule for particular column also. So, these are nothing but complex integrity constraints in SQL. So, let us discuss the first one, constraints applied on a single table. That means, the rules and regulations which we have which we have to apply on a single table by using which one, right? That is nothing but by using check option. Let us discuss this one. So, constraints that are applied on a single table are called as table constraints, right? And can be applied on a single table with the help of check option. How you can apply those rules? By writing, we used to communicate with the database with SQL, structured query language, right? So, by writing that query to the database, by using check option, we can able to apply these constraints. Before, even before inserting the data into a database, we can apply these rules and regulations also. For example, let us discuss this one with an example, right? If we want to make sure that employees, all the employee salary must be greater than 15,000 and must be less than 40,000. That means here, all the employee salaries must be greater than 15 and less than, that is in between 50 to 40 range, right? So, here we have to maintain that one, that, that the range of the salary for each and every employee. So, how we can able to apply that one even before inserting or else by creating table itself, by creating table, employee table itself, we can maintain this constraint. How? Let us uh, write this one. So, we are maintaining employees table, right? So, we have to create employee table. So, create employee, create table, right? First, we have to return, write, create table, table name. What is the table name? Employee or else EMP, whatever the name you can write. So, create table, table name. What are the attributes of this employee table? Right? For example, EID, employee ID. Employee ID, which is of what? Integer data type. You can take any kind of data types, right? Character, varchar. Right? Next, E name, employee name, which is of uh, character of some 20, the length, right? Next, E sal, employee salary. Right. For example, in teaser or else float also you can take. And what I am going to uh, give the constraint here, I used to check by using check option, my ESAL must be, must be greater than 15,000, greater than 15,000 and ESAL must be less than 40,000. This is my constraint. Right. So, by representing this check option even before creating a table. So, this restricts, this restricts the user. If at all user wants to, wants to insert a salary 14,000 for particular employee. If at all I used to give the data 14,000 for a particular employee, then the database will restrict. Why? Because here, we have implemented the check option and the check option contains the condition e cell must be greater than 15,000 and it must be less than 40,000. That is the constraint, the rule I have passed here. So, the database itself restricts. Here you have inserted 14,000, but it is not possible to insert that data into that particular column. In this way, we used to represent constraints in SQL.
So here the same thing which I have explained right now. Just I have written query right. So create create table table name which is nothing but employee which consists of uh, the attributes e id e name and e sal and e age phone number these are different types of attributes how many attributes here i have taken 1 2 3 five attributes here i have represented and e id is of int which which is not null it is also one constraint that means i used to definitely pass the value for this e id e id must not be null right so e name which is of character this also must not be null not null constraints which have we have already discussed some uh, constraints in our previous videos right so, e sal, which is nothing but float, and next e age, which is of integer data type, and that must also be not null, and phone number. And here, which I have specifically mentioned primary key as eid. What is primary key? Primary key acts as a key which retrieves the data uniquely and it must not be null. That is what primary key. Here, that kind of data will be only possible for IDs only. The names can be what the name. We have uh, names and redundancies, the same for uh, two different persons can have the same name, even with the initials also. So, how can we identify those two? Only because of their IDs, right? So, that is why only such types of attributes must be considered as primary keys. So, here EID is nothing but the primary key. And next, this is the constraint I have passed here. What is the constraint? By using check option. What is the constraint? Salary must be greater than 15,000 and it must be less than 40,000. So, if at all, I want to insert the data. For example, here by using this uh, SQL query, the table will be created like this. EID, E name and next E salary, E H and phone number. By creating or by using this SQL query, the table will be created like this. For example, if I want to insert the data, 100, E name, some A, B, C, E salary, 16,000, right, E age, 24, phone number, some 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right. For example, here I, I did not try to enter EID. I, I am trying to enter here XYZ, the name. Is it possible to keep the null value here? No, right? Why? Because I have mentioned EID as primary key. Primary key must not be null. That is one constraint. And next, if at all I used to enter the data here 200 XYZ and if I am going to enter here 14K, 14,000, 14,000. So, this will, this also will be restricted by the database DBMS. Why? Because what I have uh, given the constraint here, salary must be greater than or equal to 15,000. But here I am going to pass, I am trying to pass 14,000. It will be restricted here itself. Without entering the data itself, it will be restricted. That is the beauty of DBMS, right? So, here when new tuples are inserted into the table, the check condition is evaluated. Every time what, whenever we are inserting the new values into the tables, every time the check condition will be evaluated. If it returns true, that means if the check condition is true, then only the value will be inserted into the table. Otherwise, the value will be rejected. That is what the thing. Next, the second one is defining domain constraints. So, here what is domain in the context of DBMS in the concept of XQL here domain means nothing but one column, right. New domains can be defined in SQL by using the statement create domain. So, if at all we used to create a new domain by using some statement create domain. We can even restrict the values of new domains by using check option. With the same check option, we can able to restrict, right, the values of new domains. For example, let us discuss this one with an example. So, here by using create domain, I can create the new domains. Create domain, the syntax for this one is domain name, source domain and the default value. The default value must be maintained, right, and the default value and check the condition. Here, the check value will be evaluated. So, let us discuss this syntax with an example. Create domain, here I am creating a domain name as salary, right, which is of decimal decimal data type and the default value here is 15,000. So, here create domain by using this uh, create domain we can able to create a new domain with salary which is of uh, 
decimal data type and the default value 15,000. Whoever the employee that I am going to recruit, that, that employee salary must be 15,000. And we want to check that one, whether we have employee, whether we have recruited that employee by this salary only. Then how can we able to check that one by using this check constraint. Check the value is greater than or equal to 15,000 and value less than 40,000. If at all the range is between these only, then we can able to insert that data into that particular column, ESAL column or else salary column. This salary column will be created and the default value of this salary column which is of what decimal data type, this salary column will be default value will be 15,000 as I have mentioned here and it must be either 15,000 or greater than 15,000 must be less than 40,000. That is the uh, constraint that I am going to pass for this particular column, right. That is what about uh, creating new domains. Next, defining constraints over several tables. So, till now we have represented only constraints for single table, right. In a single table, how we can by using check option and by using for column also we can able to restrict. And how can we use to represent constraints by, by using different set of tables or combining all the tables how we can able to define a constraint that is called as assertion here right so here assertions are a group of tables on which constraints is applied unlike table constraints table constraints are nothing but what constraints applied on a single table that means the rules are applied on a single table that is what table constraints unlike table constraints so these are uh, Assertions are applied on multiple tables. So, for example, here consider the total number of employees. What we have to consider? We have, we, we need to select all the count of employee, number of employees, count of employees, right? So, working as department manager and project manager. So, we want the count of employees who are working as department manager and project manager both and those count must be exactly 20. What is the condition here? Those count must be exactly 20. How we can able to write this query? So, check this one. I want to create a table that is what department manager. In the department manager here I am going to represent employee ID, employee name and department number. Right. Why? Because in each and every department we have many number of employees. Right. So, department number, next e cell, employee cell, employee age, phone number. So, these are different types of attributes that I am going to represent. And here I am going to take primary key as EID. And I am going to check e salary between 15,000 and 40,000. This is the condition. Next, by using this check option, I am going to check here. See, select the first priority is to count employee ID from employee table, to count employee IDs. Why? Because here I want total number of employees. That is my first part of the query. I want total number of employees. Plus, along with that, I want what? Department manager and project manager. See, these department managers and project managers can be retrieved from two different tables, department table and project table also, right? So, without mentioning those tables here, I have represented just like this. Select count of department manager from department table and select count of project manager. All the three must be less than 20. Exclusively in this query, exclusively I did not mention any department table or any project table, but I just simply took that information, right. But this query can be written as exclusively by mentioning department table and project table, how we can able to write this query or modify this query as, see here. Create assertion, why? Because what is the assertion here? We are we are what applying constraints on three tables employee table department table and project table right so all those three we are applying the constraints 
on this on the three tables at a time that is what we called as assertion so here we are creating assertion create assertion so total check what we want to check here employee id from employee table we want total number of employees right along with that so plus along with that i want the count of department manager id and along with this also i want the count of project manager id from project table so here i have mentioned employee table department table and project table which is refined this is this query is refined query better than the previous query right so here that that is what the thing i have mentioned the above query involves only employee table we have created only one table and in that we are taking getting the information whereas both department and project table must also be involved equally we must give priority right so we can modify the above query by you, by giving priority of all the three tables that is employee table and the project table and manage department table so this is what the thing how we can apply constraints on multiple tables at a time so in today's session what we have discussed we have discussed about complex integrity constraints complex integrity constraints on sql so what are they integrity constraints applied on single table integrity constraints applied on multiple tables that is called as assertions and we have seen one more thing also create what creating domains creating domains by using check option right thank you